Hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. And welcome back to my Patreon page. Big thanks to those that have made this possible. And there's some $10 patrons that I'd like to shout out here. It's pretty amazing that you get behind me that level. So, we'll um, get another video up and get you something to watch. Next job, I guess, of this little engine is the wheels, and I've I went over to the sink again and gave him a scrub, scrubbed some of the sand out with a toothbrush, some soapy water, and then just filed them up. They're not bad little castings. Now I've had a few inquiries where to get these. I'm going to get a couple of sets made, and I'm going to stick them up on Etsy probably um, for sale. They won't be a particularly expensive set of castings because. I'll pass them on at about what I've got them for, but I'd really like to get someone else building it. So if you know anyone who who would be keen or someone who's just starting out, this is very much a beginner's project and it's pretty doable. But I'll I'll put these castings up at some point before we've got too many more videos going. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for them. Have a think about it because it's a it's a really nice little build. Spend a bit of time cleaning them up. Just a job with a half or like a, a half round file and a, probably use a chainsaw file. I think it's a 3 16th. Probably a 5mm chainsaw file. Just to stand, it comes with a handle and everything. When I made these patterns, I went to a bit of effort to, to make all the radiuses the same diameter as my file so they don't take very much cleaning up they need a rub around the corners and take the flash off the flats and just hold them in the vise and do that side and that side and then turn them and do that one and that one it doesn't take very long give them a clean up on the inside these in little wheels come out really nice because they've got some good taper on them these ones need a bit of cleaning up probably a little cold chisel or a rotary burr or a little bit of work like that to clean that piece out where it's where it's moved there and there's another one in here the same where it's moved there so it doesn't have to be done just yet but if you've got some patience to clean that up it's sort of worthwhile they're not very big so you can build this on a sherline lathe without too many problems and that was kind of the the idea of this this one not you could absolutely and if you if you were to grip this or to bolt it down on the on the cross slide anyone with some imagination would be able to machine that but if you buy a set of castings and you want me to do that for you first sing out let me know otherwise the rest could be built on a sort of a, a three or four inch lathe no worries at all so to machine these up we we'll have a look at this, and someone who's owned this book's actually, I reckon, built this engine because this part of the book's pretty dirty. If we have a look at this, they're reamed six mil or quarter inch. Uh, that's not particularly critical, but it'll run with a lot less rattles and wobbles if you do that. And this one's reamed three sixteenth or four to make it for axles that match. So find yourself a reamer or make a d-bit if you're feeling industrious or cheap or drill them 0.1 under and drill them out to size is probably as good as anything but a bit less wobble is a good thing one of these of course has got a groove in it for the belt drive if we have a look they're 17 millimeters wide they'll clean up nice and they're 95 millimeters diameter and they should clean up all right too if we're a bit careful setting them up. These ones are 10 wide and they're 64 approximately. But they'll clean up nice. And they'll clean up down to 10 millimeters wide. A bit wider won't hurt them if we've got any body in them. So let's have a look at the lathe and set them up. So I've decided this is the way I'm going to do these wheels. There might be two or three ways you could set them up think the process through a bit before you try something because you might get to the end and find out that there's not you're going to get machining marks or you can't set something up true or 
it's not going to quite work all the way through so think the process through now we could set this up with a DTI but it's only a rough old casting so it's got a few bumps and hollows on it the bit we want to run nice and true on a cast wheel like this more than anything is the bit that we're not going to machine and that's that inside edge there so I'm just going to use the scribe block again because that's heaps good enough to do the job and we can hear that if we just move that in there we can hear that scratch in there all the way around nearly it's not scratching there I don't think so I'm just going to have a mess with it just a little bit at a time move it across one way and we'll see if we can get it a little bit better than that so I've got that pretty close there seems to be scratching most of the way around a little bit of time just to, to set that up that's plenty good enough wobble at the speed these go really aren't going to it's not going to worry a lot but if you notice it or if you're the one who built it you will notice it and then it will bug you for the rest of your life so spend a bit of time and get them right uh, if you've got a DTI or if you've got a mag base and a, a DTI or even if you've got a DTI in the tool post it's a really good way to do it and you can take the time and you can get this set up but bear in mind that this is just a rough casting so you're going to show anything with too precise a, a measurement on it is going to show you a little bit of vibration and you're not going to be able to really tell where you're going so scribe blocks as good as anything or a needle if you haven't got a scribe block just a, a scribe a blue tack to the side of your tool post or or in your tool post it's probably as good a way as any make sure it's back against the jaws that's important i've given that a tap with a rubber hammer just to make sure it is in there nice and flat and we're just going to take a, a skim off there and, and clean the whole lot up uh, just so that it cleans up nice and probably take a measurement so we get them both the same otherwise we'll end up with more off one side than the other on the, on the other back wheel so if that makes sense I'm going to take this off until it cleans up and then I'm going to measure it because if we look at that now that's about 18 and a quarter millimetres so if we, we just go till we clean up there's no hard and fast rule that says that they actually need to be cleaned up on the back and it's probably just as good without it if you go a bit far but let's put a tool in here now what you're going to need here is a tool with enough clearance on the back of the tool which is this part of the tool back here and behind the tool post and the tool holder because there's nothing worse than getting in a little bit further and discovering it's going to tap and having to change it so we'll make sure we've got enough clearance Now this outside edge here is cleaned up pretty nice. We'll get round here so we can see. This outside edge here is cleaned up pretty nice. The middle has still got a couple of pinholes in it. We might just go another cut. that side cleaned up we could probably put a boring bar in there and just clean that that little notch up there um, clean the inside up if you wanted to I'm not going to worry too much about it we're working pretty close to the camera here and I apologize for the bumps that's cleaned up all around there probably it wants a little bit of a chamfer on there it wants to clean up with a file always use a file handle these are 3D printed, it's a pretty smart idea. And that's the first operation on the first wheel. They're pretty straightforward, there's not a lot to them. And it won't take long to get them all down to size and looking pretty nice. 
Now, before we take these out, I think we're going to center drill these. This makes it everything a little bit more concentric on the outside and makes them look a little bit less wobbly, whether they're actually wobbly or not. Nice sharp center drill. I've got a quarter inch reamer, so it's a bit of a luxury, really. They're not that expensive on eBay. You will find one, and it's probably something you'll use again and again if you're building anything at all. So it's worth getting one. But if you haven't got one, an undersized drill, if you've got a selection of drills or a set of drills, work up with it in, in tiny little increments and you'll get a much more accurate hole and finish it with a nice new drill. That way you'll get it somewhere near where it needs to be. And probably plenty good enough. This is a quarter inch hand ream and I'm just going to use it in the drill chuck which is probably a bit naughty but it gets everything nicely lined. A bit loyal on it it doesn't need to take very much out about 0.1 of a millimeter four or five ten tower maybe we're going to run the deep burr around this and we've got a bit of stuff for our axle so i'm just going to try that in there a bit too find the end with no burrs i'm not here to make crazy tight tolerances but that's a nice tight fit there and it's going to do because probably what we're going to do is set this up and run a bit of emery tape on it just to make it fit. So what have we got there? We've got a hole board, we've got this down to size and we've got the, the face board. We, we've measured this here which is 17.6 millimetres which means it needs 0.6 or something a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever cleans up to on the back there. While I'm working here, I'm going to get this one to the same stage. Set him up nice and machine this, face him and put the hole in him and then we'll look at machining the other side. So I've taken the time to machine all four wheels down to that stage. There's a bit of work in them. They didn't require a lot of setup. A good way to remember where your setup is to always make a habit if you're using a four jaw to undo jaw one and two. And if you do that all the time, then the next bit might go in somewhere close and you don't take as long to set it up. Have a look, we've got two front wheels machined and bored. And we've got two of the big black wheels down to the same stage. So next job, will be to set these up and machine the back of them. Now we can't hold them by the outside here. Probably we could. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do them and we could make a mandrel with a bolt but it's not a very big diameter in the middle to, to clamp it on so I'm not real struck about that. Probably the best thing is to set these all up in the four jaw and quickly machine them down to the right thickness and then we might make or we might set them up on the face plate the other way around to, to machine the, the outside rims which is the only real bit to do then so while well, we've got these set somewhere up near enough and put them back in and just do up jaw one and jaw two nice and nice and firm back against the jaws we're going to check that they're concentric and Probably the easiest and quickest way is just to leave the tool at the right setting and run across both of them until you get them both exactly the same. So let's run them pretty true just by eye. And still not quite clean here. If we make a, a note of, of where our, our cross slide is, when we set the next one up, we should be able to get them exactly the same thickness. And this setup doesn't matter a lot if it's within about what you can see by eye. 
and that's probably close enough. It hasn't cleaned up on that side, but it's going to be good enough. So that's the second one machined down to the same thickness. If they're both done at the same setting, they should be exactly the same thickness. Now we might set up and do exactly the same with these. Spend a bit of time getting them set up so they're pretty well ice sweet. Clean them up. And we look at turning the outside rims in. Now that's the final wheel set up and the back faced. And these two wheels were set against the jaws nice and firm and flat. And they were both machined at the same setting on the on the compound slide. So they need they will be exactly the same thickness hopefully. Undo number one and number two, just in case when we get them back together that they need to be, one needs to, to be faced again, but they look pretty good. We've got the backs faced, and they haven't quite cleaned up there, and there's another spot there, a shrink hole, but don't stress too much about that. And this is faced right through. All we've got to do is the outside red perimeters on all of them and then we've got our wheels more or less done. Now, there's probably 10 different ways we could do this. We could chuck a piece of bar and we could bore it to fit the, the hub of the wheel and put a bolt through the back of it. And that would probably do the job nicely. We could set them up in the forejaw and the jaws the other way around, get them to run nice and true on the centre hole. And that would probably work too. There's a lot of messing around. And because they're quite big diameter and you're not holding by a very big boss in the center that's a soft material, you're gonna find they're gonna slip a bit. So what I think I'm gonna do is set up my, my face plate. If you haven't got a face plate, a piece of MDF cut to a circle and put in a four jaw is probably as good as anything for this job. And if you're not quite sure about it and take a skim over it before we use it. But I'm going to use my face plate and I've got a piece of timber that's already bolted to it and I'm going to use some washers and some wood screws basically is going to be the holding the holding system for this. So let's have a look when we've got it set up. I'll try and zoom out a bit there but what I've done I've got a piece of MDF on the on the face plate and this is my go-to palette for a lot of jobs. Uh, we've got holes tapped all the way through here so if we want to use proper hold downs on this face plate we can I've also got a set of four jaw chuck jaws to go in it however rather than make a proper aluminium pallet to bolt everything down on and it's probably a nice effort nice thing to have this bit of MDF is probably as good as anything it's nowhere near on centre there but it's not going to worry anything in this, this big solid lathe. What I'm going to do is I've just set this up on the centre so that it's somewhere near concentric. And if we draw around the two opposite spokes there with the sharpie, we can slip that off, set these up and drill them in the drill press. And we can use a couple of washers and just a couple of wood screws to hold everything together and that, that's going to do the job just nicely. So we want a hole in the centre there and a hole in the centre there. And a big screwdriver and a couple of wood screws to put in there with some washers. Let's have a look. Another thing I did was just run a, a texture line or a, a sharpie line around the outside there somewhere. Just so that you can get it somewhere nearby eye and I've tightened them up again and put the centre in there so that it's on centre and just tightened each one up individually and that should be running pretty sweet I'm pretty happy with that that's a pretty good way to set something up flat and, and, and concentric that's a, it's a bit of an odd size so we're going to machine the outside of these and do both the big ones and then both the little ones and the wheels will be about done they are a bit tapered, so if you've only got a small lathe, take a little bit off the outside of the back first. And then come back a little bit further each cut. Another thing to remember if you've only got a small lathe is that you haven't got as many horsepower 
out here on the outside. It's a bit more mechanical disadvantage. So very easy to stall your machine. Another good reason to use a wooden faceplate is that you can just undercut this and you don't have to worry about shimming it up because if you've got to put shims on this and washers on the inside or the spacers or whatever to keep it above your, your pallet, you're going to find that you're not going to have enough hands to set it all up and it's going to be out of balance, it's going to be ugly. So this is probably the best and easiest way to do that. Now we're down to size there nearly. A couple of ways to check it. Caliper is really good. If you haven't got anything that fancy, a ruler and a set of inside calipers. This needs point, if we have a look here, point about point 0.6 off to be down to size, which is 95 millimeters by the drawing. So there we go. You've got a bit of a burr here. The other wheel, of course, needs a groove in it for the for the the drive band, and we'll deal with that when we come to it. But next job is to set the other wheel up and to get him down to this, and then we'll have a look at putting a groove in it. So now I've got these pretty well down to size, and they both look the same. I've just set up a little parting tool. So I've gently fed the parting tool in there, as narrow as you can. It's, we'll find something to, to drive this later. And I don't think that'll be a, a particularly huge effort or a particularly difficult thing to do. I did take the time to put the sender in here like this. Uh, if you can see that. Just to, to stop it moving while we, we, we did this operation. But got that pretty good. We can take this one out too and we might do the same the same operation for the, the front wheels. So that's the second front wheel done. I've just given these a bit of a clean up with some scotch bright on the outside. Emery tape might do something like that. They don't need very much if you're a bit careful with your your surface finishes and you've got a sharp tool. They don't want sharp corners on them. It's really, I guess we're making a toy, so it wants to be a bit safe. So after machining all that cast aluminium, you're gonna have a huge mess to clean up. So we're gonna call that a day here, I think. Turn the lathe off and give it a good square vacuum up. We've got two little wheels here. They're the front wheels. I've taken a bit of time just to clean the sharp edges off them so that they feel safe and smooth. A uh, little bit of chatter in the rim of this one and probably it's just going to get a little hand work either with some scotch bright or a little bit of wet and dry just to clean them up, get them nice. But that's a, an ongoing thing and it's easy enough to fix. We've got two back wheels. One's got a groove in it there and one hasn't. They still need a little bit of work around the back here. But they look pretty good. I'm sort of pleased with them. And I guess the, the next job really is to make a start on the boiler. That's a, a piece of 45mm copper tube. And it's pretty straightforward and I don't think anyone will have any problems making it. To recap I guess I've spent on these wheels I've probably spent two or three hours just getting them cleaned up. They need a little bit more work but they, they will clean up pretty nice. And that's the that's the castings all machined. It's not a huge thing it's really quite a, a small little engine but it's 
coming along nicely. Thanks for watching guys and girls and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it on Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciated. Hope you've enjoyed this series. I have aimed it to first project beginners and hopefully it answers enough questions to get someone actually making one of these. If you decide to make it and you have trouble with any of the setups I've shown, shoot me an email, drop me a line, send me a message, leave a message on this video, leave a message on Patreon, wherever, and I'll get back to you and answer you, or um, have a look at your pictures, or message your chat, whatever. Be happy to help, but so far I'm really pleased with that.